Okay guys, in this video I'm just going to be letting you guys know my current problems with, um, with ICBC, uh, my driver's license. Um, it's been a non-stop battle um, since um, January of this year. But um, as you can see, I'm just outside right now and uh, it's it's beautiful but it's windy. It's windy so I think I might, I might just go shoot in the car. I'm a little stronger now, a little stronger. So guys, I actually decided to come um, indoors and stay um, stay indoors. Like I said, I'm just gonna be telling you guys uh, my experience with ICBC and what is going on right now. It's uh, it's it's not a good situation. Uh, it's not a good situation because so I'll start it. I'll start it this way. So in um, I had two Nigerian licenses, driver's license. The one I had before coming to Canada, and um, the one um, while I was here in 2016, um, the one I had before coming here expired. So I had to tell my parents to like. Um, I asked. I asked my mom. I asked my dad. I, I was like, "Hey, is it possible to um, renew my Nigerian license while in Canada here? Because it's expensive to go back home, and I, I didn't just want to have to go back home. So I asked my parents to help me renew my license, and." Uh, they, um, they said yeah it was possible they renewed it in Nigeria and they sent it to, they sent it to me while I was here um, I got the license it had a different number on the license uh, a different li driver's license number entirely from my first one I, I just wondered why that was like that but um, I never I never I never thought it was a big deal I I took it I kept on driving in Canada with that license um, I've been driving in Canada since 2016. And um, I kept on driving um, up until this year, 2019, when um, it was supposed to expire. The expiry date was my birthday, actually, January 29th. And um, so, yeah, um, I decided to, I'm still a student here. I, I could have kept on driving with that license um, until I was done school in December. But I decided to actually go to ICBC and like try to transfer my um, Nigerian license into the Canadian full license because um, you only require two years um, previous driving experience. So I went there hopeful, happy, and I went there to transfer my license. The first day, well, I went there on the 27th and um, it went smooth. Um, they told me to um, take the knowledge test, which I passed on the spot. And then, um, and then right after that, we they did a, a visual test. I had to put my eyes into some machine and they did all sorts of visual tests. I passed that also. And um, so the next step was to take my road test, the uh, class five road test, which uh, the, it's hard to get into, it's hard to book a date because most people book a date and there's no spots available. Like, so you have to book weeks ahead or months ahead. But he told me to, because um, of, because my license was expiring on 29th, they told me that it gave me a number to call to see if um, I was going to have any success. I'm trying to call the number to see if I can, they can push me ahead and book me for maybe the 28th or the 29th. And I called, um, there was a spot, luckily there was a spot available on 29th. Someone had just cancelled and uh, they put me in for 8.30 a.m. in the morning um, to take my class 5 full road test. So um, I went in there, um, I came, I arrived early, I arrived around 8.15, everything was good. I checked in, signed in, and yeah, I was out having my um, road test with, uh, with this guy, I think he was Arab, he was Arab, yeah. So um, I eventually failed the road test um, because of one thing, it was an automatic fail, which it was a mistake no one would ever make. So one that I'd never even make in my, made in my life. Um, something that, who, would, who wouldn't stop at a red light? Um, I'm not blaming anyone for this, it was my fault. Um, but I had a reason, I just I had my sunshades down. I, I couldn't tell if it was a red light or if it was a, a four-way stop. Because the car on the right, there was no car in the intersection. But the car on the right had stopped and then moved. And um, my sheets were down, I couldn't. I didn't, I should have, but I didn't dock down to see the signs. I didn't see a stop sign also, but uh, yeah, 
it was my fault. Um, the instructor had to yell, "Oh, stop! It's a, it's a it's a red light." So if if your instructor intervenes verbally or physically in your exam, it's an automatic fail. So I failed my um, road test. It was a really sad day, but um, it was my fault. So I'm not blaming anyone, but just to put it out there, it was a sad day. It was my birthday. I turned 23. But it was a sad day. I couldn't go. I didn't go to work that day. I felt sick. I felt disgusted with myself. I went home, cried like a baby, calling sick to work. I just yeah, yeah. That apart, um, they told me to book, um, rebook the test. You've got to wait two weeks to rebook your test. So I waited. Um, I rebooked. I called and I rebooked for um, February 14th. I think that was Valentine's Day. Yeah. I rebooked my test for February 14th. If I'm not wrong, it's a Tuesday. If I'm not wrong, it's a Tuesday. So I rebooked my test for that day, um, a Tuesday. I went in, it was snowing that day. Yeah, I remember it was snowing that day. Um, my school was canceled, the university was canceled. Um, Victoria Police had issued um, a warning that drivers rather, rather drivers stay indoors so because buses were sliding also like transit buses like it was it was we just had a bad weather so um but i still drove my my car with my girlfriend um we went to to, to the icbc testing center um upon getting there it was locked but um it opened if i eventually opened and they told me that um i couldn't take my test that day that I had to go back because um, the Victoria Police had cancelled um, all tests, regardless of what class. So they cancelled all tests. Um, I just went back home. Um, I called again. I had to book for, it was the Friday of that same week, 14, 15, 16, 17th, yeah, yeah. Um, so I had to call and rebook um, the test for the Friday, correct? I don't know if it's the 17th, but it was February, it was a Friday, 2019, it was a Friday, after the 12th, 17th, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, it's something, boom, just leave it like that, check the dates, let me know what date it was, but yeah, I rebooked for Friday, um, I came in there on Friday, um, as soon as I came in, I tried to check in for because I had booked for around 9, 10 a.m. in the morning. I tried to check in, um, they told me, they let me book. <laughs> this, was, this was funny, they let me book for book my road test. I came in, the woman told me that, oh, my um, license is on hold. My driver's license, my, my Nigerian driver's license, the one I submitted is on hold. And, and um, I couldn't take my road test. I was like, that's not possible. My license can't be on hold. What is wrong? You guys should let me know what's wrong. She was, I guess she doesn't know what was going on or she was hiding hiding information from me, but she's like, she doesn't know what's going on. And um, I was I, I was there arguing, because sometimes you can just keep quiet and these people will just run over you, walk over you. So I was arguing, I was like, what's wrong? And she went to go to speak to someone behind, she went behind to go speak to someone, and then a man came up there, a man that had nothing to do with my, my situation, my case, and he was like, oh, you wouldn't be able to, um, do your road test anyway today you have um, that it's still snowy on the road and unless you have snow tires you can't you can't <laughs> he thought I had a he thought I, I had a car I couldn't drive in the snow he was like oh unless you have snow tires you can't drive right now because it's still snowy and that um, yeah I, I told him I had all season tires and my car was fairly new so you can't tell me that I can't drive in the snow. I just drove drove down here with no problems. You know what I'm saying? So it was like he went he went outside. He was like, "Where's your car?" We went outside. I showed him my car. He felt it. He felt everything. He was like, "Hmm, this looks really good." But I don't think you need full snow tires. I was like, "These are all season tires. Pretty brand new." And you're telling me I can't. I can't take a test with this. He went back to the desk. This dude had nothing to do with me. He just came out of nowhere. Just to tell you that they were being shady. They were being shady towards me. But he went back and he, 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 he called, made some calls and he confirmed. Oh yeah, he came back, he told me that, yeah, you can, 
you can if your license is good you can go on and you can have your road test with with these tires but then the woman came back and she told me that oh my license my driver's my nigerian driver's license had been sent to an investigations officer in the downtown downtown office that um i should go there and um, speak to them and find out what's going on with my um, driver's license I was like, oh, who are you guys dealing with? Can you give me the number of the officer so I can contact him, so I can know what's going on? You, you guys just can't keep me in the blind and tell me to leave here, that my license is under investigation. And I, I'm not gonna know what's going on. I have a car, I pay insurance for, I have to drive. I need to know what's going on. So they gave me uh, a class five learner's driver's license, class five LDL, not the normal, not the normal, Lena's license, which is the class seven Lena's driver's license, they gave me a class five Lena's driver's license, so I could drive without some without someone who's over the age of 25 in the car, which is what the normal Lena's driver's license. You can't do that with the normal driver's Lena's driver's license. You have to have someone above 25 who has a few license who has a full license in the car with you. But um, yeah, with this one they gave to me, I could drive without. Uh, I could drive by myself. It's 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 basically a class five with no restrictions, but it's a learner's driver's license. So they gave me that. Um, so I went to the down. I called the number first, and the officer. I, uh, the officer told me that oh my uh, license is basically being investigated for. Um, they think it's a it's a fake license. It's a fraud license, and that they've had Nigerians in the past submit fake license. So my license is under on that check. I was like, oh, so you guys have a thing against Nigerians. It's not just me. He was like, nah, mine look fake. I was like, okay, if you guys think that looks fake, I don't know if that looked fake. My parents sent it to me while I was in Canada. So if that even looks fake to you, that's fine. You can you can take it or do whatever you want. But I have my license. I have the license I came to Canada with, the one I got in Nigeria. While I was still in Nigeria, I still have that one with me. So if you guys need it, just let me know. He was like, oh, if you have that one, yeah, come into the office, come on in. Drop your drop, drop it off, drop it off with me at the at the office, so I can take a look at it. I was like, okay, okay, I'll come in. And uh, sorry, guys, I just had a um, uh, where did I stop? So yeah, they give me um. <laughs> The Two thousand years later, I went to the downtown office after I called, and um, I went there. I had to wait in the line for some reason, even though I was there to see him to see the this investigations officer. So um, I waited in the line. I spoke to the receptionist um, that I'm here to see this person. I, his name. I gave him his name. I gave her his name. Um, she told me she she told me to wait there. She went to the back office to speak to someone there. I think this was a I don't know what her position was, but she went in there to speak to this this other woman, and the woman told her something. I don't know what the woman told her, but as soon as she came out to me, she was like, "Oh, where's your second license?" I never told her what I was there for. I never told her what I was there for. I told her I was there to see this person. But she came back and she was like, oh, where's the second license? I gave it to her and she just took it as in, she took it and she just kept it back. She was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. We'll let him know, we'll let him know when he's here. You can just leave now. Something, something is going on. You can see what, I, something is going on. So she took my license that I never told her I was there for. And she, she didn't hide it back, but she held it back. She held it back, basically insinuating that, oh, you're not gonna get this back today, or, or ever. So she took the license and she kept it back and she was like, oh, we're gonna give it to him, we're gonna let him know you, you drop by and this, you can leave. I never saw the, the officer I went there to see, I left. Um, I called him right after I left that, oh, you weren't there, he was like, oh, um, don't worry, I, I have your license now. <laughs> I have your license now and we're going to investigate this also and we'll let you know what the answer is and we'll give you a call by uh, Monday morning because it's, it's the weekend. 
They're gonna give me a call on Monday. Monday, I, on Monday, I got no call. Tuesday, I called. I decided to call because um, I was tired of waiting. I couldn't drive in this period, right? I couldn't drive because it's it's illegal, and I didn't want to get my car impounded or get into trouble for driving without a license or hit someone and then, and have to pay their medical bills for the rest of my life. So um, I, I wasn't driving in this period. Um, so um, on Tuesday when I called, he was like, oh, they couldn't find this license in the in their date in the Nigerian driver's license database also. So it's fake. And um, so my two licenses are fake. And I was like, this can be fake, sir. I'm sorry, but this can be fake. This is my license. If you're saying the other one is fake, I could agree that the other one is fake because my parents sent it to me. And I'm not blaming my parents, but they sent it to me. And if it's fake, then yeah, it's fake. But the one I give to you when I drop by the office, it's my license. So don't tell me that it's fake. He's like, oh, is there a way you can contact the uh, Federal Road Safety Commission? That's our ICBC back home in Nigeria. Is there a way you can contact them uh, and get a written letter of your information, your history, driving history and stuff in Nigeria? I was like, there's no way I can get that information. You, you guys know there is no way I can get that information without having to go back to Nigeria. And I'm in school. I'm trying to be done with, done with school in December. You guys know that there's no way I can get that information. There's no way. And he was like, oh, go to the website, find a, find a number, find an email. I went to receive this website. There was no email. There was a number that I called. And that number, I swear to God, my person with the chops to you answered that number. Someone who was buying meat answered that number. As soon as the person answered the call, he was like, oh, I didn't buy you Text me, text me, I'm buying, like, in English. Okay, sorry, in English. He was like, oh, I'm buying something. Can you, can you text this, can you text me? This is supposed to be the Federal Road Safety Commission number, like an official company that issues license. This is supposed to be their phone number. But someone answered. I was like, oh, can you text me? Okay, I, uh, I texted them, I'm like, oh, I'm in, I'm in Canada, I'm in trouble. I need to get a letter from Road Safety to get my to get my to get a letter from them. That Canada they don't give me my um they don't they don't wanna approve my license, my Nigerian license in Canada. That's this is what I texted to the number. I got no answer, I got no reply ever. Till today I haven't gotten any reply. So I called back and I spoke to the officer. He was like, Oh, that happened? I was like, Yeah, that happened. There's no way I can contact them except going back to Nigeria. And he was like, hey, oh, let's go to this website. He started going on the phone. He was on his laptop, on his phone, he was on the computer. He was talking to me and going through a website. He was like, have you been here? Have you contacted this number? I was like, yeah, that's the number I called. And he went through, he was like, oh yeah, there's no email. I was like, yeah, there's no email. He was like, oh, can, can you get someone back home to go get something from me? I'm like, I don't know want to go get a fake document. And then you guys blame me again for getting a fake document. Uh, he was like, yeah, but you have to try. Um, for now, uh, we're gonna, uh, to cut the show is um, short. At the end of everything, the ba he basically said, we're not gonna give you a Canadian, a Canadian full class five driver's license. And that you're gonna have to go through the GLP program, which is the learners for one year, the um, and for two years, before even taking your road test to get the class five. So three more years, for the first year, I wouldn't be able to drive with the learners, except if I have someone over 25 in the car with me. Except if I have someone over 25 with the car, in the car with me. I can't live on someone's schedule, you know what I'm saying? I can't live on someone's schedule. It's just, it's just, it's just, I've been driving in Canada since, I was 20, since 2016. And this dude is telling me that, oh, for the next year, I wouldn't be able to drive my car. Unless if I have someone over 25 in the car with me to go get the normal learner's driver's license. That's what this dude said. Um, so basically, I, I, I was pissed off and I told him that, I'm sorry, but you guys have given me the class five LDL. 
I'm not gonna return that back to you guys. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna return that back to you guys. And whatever, I'm gonna drive with this, whatever you guys want to do to me, you guys do to me. I was really mad. I was really, really mad over the phone with um, this investigations officer. I was mad with him. And um, he told me that, yeah, whatever you want to do, do. Do it, whatever you feel like doing, you do it. Um, so yeah, the call ended. And I basically, I made up my mind that I was gonna drive. I made up my mind I was gonna drive with, with that license. I don't care what, whatever happened, I don't care. If, it's, if they wanna deport me back to Nigeria, then that should happen. I, I wasn't thinking, I just decided that's what I was gonna do. Um, it took my um, girlfriend um, to calm me down and to put sense back into my head to let me know that that's, that doesn't make sense, that it's just a dumb move. That um, even if it means for her to help me for like the next year, um, she would do it. She would go out of her way to do it. And um, that, um, but I shouldn't drive with my uh, with with that. And I should go give it back to them. So, yeah. After the call, before the end of that day, I went to to the to the ICBC's office and I got the um, I got the full. I got I got the Canadian. Class seven learner's license, the normal learner's license, and this was towards the end of February, 2019. And um, for some reason, it was backdated. The learner's license set, started um, January 22nd, 24th, 20, 20, 20, 22nd, 23rd, or 24th. That's when it started. For some reason, it, um, they made it start back then. I don't know why, but um, yeah. So basically, I, I have to have the the L for the next year until January 22nd when I can go take a, um, an, an N road test. But also, he told me that um, if before the end of December I can get a letter from Road Safety Commission to prove that, oh, my license is real, my license number and stuff, that um, they're gonna give me the chance to take my road test to get the uh, class five license, the full license. Um, but I was like, how do I even get road safety to get check, check my information when I don't even have my license number, my driver's license number? Nigeria is not that sort of country that has, um, that has technology like we do here, it has databases and stuff like that where information is stored. Things used to be done on paper before I, on people before I came here, and he was like, "Well, just give them your name, and they should be able to find your file." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> sounds good." Basically, he was so rude and so mean, but um, there's nothing you can do once they say something here. There's nothing much you can do. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. It's the law here, so yeah. Um, so what I ended up doing was to uh, cancel. The insurance on my car i still pay i still pay the finance the finance on my car but i cancelled the insurance on my car um i just got a storage insurance for one year it cost about 130 dollars yeah uh, 130 dollars for one year i bought the storage insurance i parked my car somewhere i'm paying the finance but i'm not paying um insurance monthly because i'm not gonna drive the car because I'm not gonna find, I'm not, there's no way I'm gonna find someone over 25 to drive the car with. So the car is parked there, and uh, shout out to my uh, my two friends. Then if you're watching this video, you know yourselves. You guys, you guys, thank you so much for letting me park my uh, my car at your place. It's a private property, so uh, the car you you, can, you can't park an uninsured car in the road in Canada. You can't. To, for a car to be parked on the road, it's gotta be in short. So I had to park it in a private property. So you guys watch. You guys are watching this video. I know you guys are. Thank you guys for letting me park the car at your place. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful for you guys letting me do that. But um, yeah. So uh, so yeah. But it's, uh, it's May. It's May first now. So um, I'm. I still have about. What is it? Seven, eight months to go to to be able to um, get that uh, the end. But right now, my parents are still helping me. They're still trying to fight to see if there's a way they can get a letter from 
um, road safety in Nigeria, the headquarters in Abuja. They're trying, but um, it's hard because I'm not I'm not in the country, right? I'm not, I'm not back home in Nigeria. There's no way I need to be there to do to give like an identification, like thumbprinting and uh, uh, other forms of new systems they have back home now. I don't know what they, I haven't been back home in a while, but um, yeah. That's where we are right now, and uh, so fighting it out. But um, if you guys, if you guys um, have any advice on, on what I should do, or um, what do you think I should do, or if you guys have even, if you have been in the same situation as I am in right now, if just comment and say, comment down below. Let me know what your experiences are, what you're doing, what you, how you're going through it, like what you're doing to fight it. So, do you think I should keep? trying to get a letter to um, to uh, fight this or do you think I should just wait it out but you know just wait it out for eight more months and do get the end or do you think I should go back home to try and get something or what what do you guys think I should do just let me know you know comment in comment in, um, comment in the comment section down below let me know your your thoughts your ideas on what I should do your experiences also it's Canada I mean I'm sure there's lots of people who've been in my shoes, so um, just, yeah. I think that's it for this video. That's all. I just wanted to share my experience with you guys. And um, you guys can... So you guys know what to do when it's your turn, you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, one more thing I want to say to anyone coming to Canada for the first time. As soon as you come here, as long as you're above 16 years of age, go get your L. Go get your L. Have it for a year, then towards the end of the year, toward the, towards the end of the 12 month period, start, if you don't know how to drive, learn how to drive, take your N, road test, pass it, hold your N for two years. Even if you don't have a car, do the shit. You know what I'm saying? Just do it. And then, so that you don't waste time. When, when it's time for you to drive, you don't have, you don't waste any time. You don't waste any, any more time in your life. You know what I'm saying? it's not easy going back to driving yourself everywhere to having to depend on someone else it's my girlfriend driving me around I appreciate her so much but it, sometimes it's not easy on her too right so you don't want to be in the same situation as I am right now so um, it's just my my uh, advice but yeah of course you're free to do whatever you feel like you want to do but yeah um, that's all I have to say for now um, so yeah please um, like this video if you thought it's been helpful to you in any way or form just please leave a like on the video it really helps and if you can subscribe that would be that that would be amazing too so yeah please like this video subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one boom